power point, explosive study. So, as usual, call someone. God will not reject anyone. Jesus wants to make you a new person today. Good morning, good morning, good morning to all our friends and followers and Whispering Hope YouTube channel, Bible Hope Facebook personal page, and Whispering Hope. We're happy to have you following us and following the daily study. We are thankful for the reviews you have given us for the last two weeks, how you're satisfied with what we are doing. So we're really happy to have you this morning. And again, this morning, we have the host. We have changed seats. And I'm, I'm getting to adjust. Not as good as Elder Kemba this morning. We are looking at our third installation, however, at Lesson 7. And it says, Defeat of the Assyrians. What a different topic from last week. Last week was an exciting, scintillating topic, playing God. And that from... Just from the topic itself, it captured your imagination. Wonder where this is going. But this is clear. The feet of the Assyrians. Maybe it's how they did it, what they're going to do, how it's going to happen, who is behind of all this. All these questions will be answered today by Elder Kempton, giving us an overview, a look into this week's study. And always, he's a very insightful man, so... We know that today, this morning, is going to be an excellent submission from him. Elder Tong, welcome, welcome, welcome to Whispering Hope, early morning, daily Sabbath school review. Could you introduce God's presence with a word of prayer? Well, certainly, Elder. Our Lord and our God, we thank you again for the breath of life for this new day, for your spirit that is with us, and for your word that you have given unto us to be a light unto our feet and a lamp onto our path. We ask now for enlightenment. We also ask for power to put what you reveal to us into practice. Be with our listeners, Lord, and direct their steps today in Jesus' name. Amen. This time we'll have our memory text. Our memory text, you've gotten familiar with our memory text. It's the key text that we use for the entire week and guides the way into what we will study. It says, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, the one who dwells between the cherubim, you are God, you alone, of all the kingdoms of earth, you have made heaven and earth. Isaiah 37, 16. Isaiah 37, 16. Elder Kem, it says the feet of the Assyrians, but what a memory text. What does that have to do with the defeat of the Assyrians? This is just shouting praise and acclamation and then giving honor to whom honor is due. That memory text is saying who our God is, what he's able to do, what he has done, and that everything was created by him. So what that has to do with the defeat of the Assyria? Well, I tell the Joseph, good morning again. Well, things move in cycles. And once again, the children of Israel find themselves in a predicament. And the question is, uh, who are you going to trust? Uh, who are you going to trust? And uh, why are you going to trust? Him? The difference this time around is that, unlike unfaithful Ahaz, there is a faithful king, Hezekiah, who is ruling his people and who is guiding his people and who is pointing them to the God who made heaven and earth, the almighty God, against whom no political a movement, no military might, however powerful, can stand. And so in this verse, we have the essence of the Christian confession. My God is the sovereign God who made heaven and earth. In him and in him alone will I trust. And when we are trusting in him, we have good basis for trusting in him. Because as I said, he's not only the maker of heaven and earth, but he rules over all. And no one can stand against him. So it's a question of choice again. And again, we have to come back face to face. Who are we going to trust? Will we trust in God? Or will we trust in what the enemy is offering us? Elder, well, you know I love the stories. I already said that to you and to the listeners. You know, I love Sabbath afternoon's portion when they bring those scintillating story. But I must confess, this week's story 
I didn't catch it. Okay. I must confess that. I was trying to figure it out. Um, what's behind the story? It's talking about a gaunt man walks barefoot, or a skinny, frail man. He's walking barefoot with his two sons. Another family has, a load, has loaded their belongings onto an ox cart pulled by an emaciated oxen. And a man leads the oxen while two men sit on their cart. Less fortunate people have no cart. That's probably speaking about the skinny man. And so they carry their possession on their shoulders. And it went on. It says soldiers are everywhere. A battering ram smashes into the city gate. Archers on top of the ram shoot at the defender on the wall. Hectic carnage reigns supreme. Fast forward. You know, so, and that's the kind of setting the story that's there. And I was trying to grasp it, uh, grasp it, say, I would like to catch it before Elder Kemp comes on. So I know where he's taking me. I could ask him a few questions. But you, you've got to enlighten me on this particular story this afternoon. What is the picture this story is trying to paint? Right, Elder, interesting. So again, remember, we're dealing with a very powerful, powerful enemy here, the Assyrian army. And this is an example of the exploit. Once they come and they ransack you, they leave you completely devastated, you know? It's a brutal military force. And here you have some images depicting the kind of crusades that they would carry out. And if you would go to the end of Saturday, also you see him, the king, sitting high. He's reigning supreme. He's God. He's in charge. Everyone that he goes after or who stands in his way, they get pulverized, they get decimated. And so you have a picture on one hand of, of weakness, utter weakness, utter destruction. On the other hand, you have a one who is large and in charge sitting on top. That's the king, King Sennacherib of the Assyrians. And you will notice, Ella, as we go through this week's lesson, that he's going to bring that same image because he's going to say to King uh, Hezekiah, Hey, look at what we have done to all those nations who stood up against us. Look at every one of them. Was anyone able to stand up? Was they God able to stand up against us? They, they, are, they are ruins today. And I am standing. I am standing. So that, that's the image that you have there. Powerful, powerful army. Militarily powerful. Materially powerful. And it's got a king who is very powerful and braggadocious to speak. Absolutely. I understood that part of it because the bottom part of the, the Sabbath afternoon's portion said that, you know, he had trophies. Let me call them that. Pictured around the wall of all when he captured Judea and, and all the other nations there, they all filled um, his wall. So he must have felt, I am the powerful king conquering and to conquer and there is none to upturn my country. Everybody trembles at, that sounds somewhat like the, the, the story of Babylon and, and Nebuchadnezzar. They felt impregnable and being a fortress that no one dare rise any military might against. Is that absolutely. what we see here, um, Elder? You're absolutely right, Elder. You're absolutely right. And you know what comes after that because it's the height of pride speaking there. You become so powerful on an earthly level that you think that you're actually bigger than God. You can take on God now. You can go against God's people. You can go against what God says. And so you raise your fist at God, and God is very able to really break your hand and, and, and set you in your place. And that's what we're going to find as we explore this week's lesson, that the results now are very different than they were back then when a faithless king who did not know God was on the throne and instead chose logic, chose reason, chose to go with what he could see, rather than this time around when we have a king who has been trusting in God and knows God, knows that he has to trust in him, knows that God is the right way and the only source of deliverance. And what do we find? The results are remarkably different. As a matter of fact, in this battle, the children of Judah would not even have to lift a single finger, because God would win the battle for them in a spectacular way. 
Well, as I interview the panelists going through this week, I'm going to be targeting because I want to draw those points from them um, to see how this thing is going to unfold. With this political imagery, because even though Judea, Judea uh, is a, they are the people of God. We're talking about politics here, all mingle. How does that relate? How do we relate that in a spiritual sense to us in the spiritual warfare that we're fighting here on earth as Christians? Well, you're so right. Remember that we are locked in a spiritual warfare and the enemy is always coming after us and offering us options. And one of the options that he puts before us is always political in nature. Do we look to policies? Do we look to program? Do we look to that which is logical? Or do we trust in God and what he has said? Do we, even when we cannot trace him, trust him, even when the circumstances seem so powerful, so overwhelming, such as we are in right now? Can we continue to trust in God or do we based on the, the taunt of the enemy, based on the fact that the enemy would have been making certain grounds, do we give in to him? So it's still pretty much alive today, Ella. The enemy uses politics and um, intrigue and propaganda, and he has many schemes that he tries to bring against God's people and his object. Mark you, remind you. Remember the scripture says to us, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For him that cometh unto him must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. And this is what we see here playing out. So there's always going to be that political intrigue. There's always going to be the propaganda and stuff like that. But God's people have got to decide this one question. Am I going to let the circumstances around me, negative, overwhelming as they may be, erode my faith in God? Or will I stand true to the pole and trust in God, even though the heavens fall around me? You painted a picture there. I didn't know you're a master painter, but you're painting a picture there in my mind which says that sometimes we as ourselves as believers judge our strength from where, where we stand at the, at the present, where we stand at the present. Because you know sometimes that you meet and we're going out to evangelize and there would be people who say, you can't win that battle. We have been witnessing in the community. Our members are not living right. There are many reasons that they're going to put on the table why we should postpone that evangelistic thrust. Is that similar to what we're seeing, we'll be seeing in this week's lesson? It is. It is. And in fact, it is. And, and that you put it that way is very, very um, perceptive, Ella, because, again, he's always bringing reasons to tell you why you won't be successful, why you can't trust the God that you say that you serve. And so... In a very real way, I've heard those uh, uh, those excuses given. Oh, we, we, we haven't worked the field. We haven't done this and we haven't done that. But God's word is simply go, go. And that's what he expects us to do, to go, you know. And so you're quite right. We have all sorts of excuses that, that come up. And it's the enemy that is really sowing these because God has already spoken. And what we need to do, we need to take the word of God just as he has given it to us and march on, standing in faith on the word of God. Well, I, I'm actually seeing where the lesson is really going this week. And so, Elder, I'm going to pull you back in last week's lesson because it looks like it's a tie over. It's a tie over, and, and we've got lot to learn. To, because remember, we're, looking, we're coming from a point where Ahaz formed an alliance with this very Assyrian today that we're seeing, the defeat of the Assyrians. Mm -hmm. What's going to change that? Israel, Judah, cower in. They gave in. They did not lose a physical war, but they gave in and formed an alliance. Peace with Assyria. But now we are seeing the defeat of Assyria. What's making this quantum leap? What's making the change? <laughs> very, very interesting question, Elder. And here you see one of the benefits of having godly leaders. And by godly leaders, I mean men who are men of faith, men who will trust in God, men who will early see God and continue to seek him throughout. 
because that's really the difference here. Here you have a King young uh, Hezekiah coming to the throne at 25 years old. But the scripture tells us that he trusted in God and he walked with God. Before him, there was none like him and none after. And having a godly leader, how did he direct his people? He directed them in the ways of God. He changed the entire culture of that nation to one where they would worship and look to the God of heaven alone. And so here you have a God-fearing leader, one trusting in God, not trusting in military might, not trusting in any uh, political intrigue, but trusting in God. And so what happens to him? When trouble comes, as trouble is, uh, is one to come upon all of us, what does he do? He turns to God and he turns the attention of his people to God. He tells them, trust in God, for in God is our help. He is our only hope. So again, Elder, we have a plug here of how important leadership is. Leadership matters. On the Ahaz, they didn't have any leadership and the nation fell apart. You have proud leadership that when God gives them the, the victory, they accrue uh, power and, and praise unto themselves, it comes crashing down again. So we see the power and the requirement for godly uh, leadership amongst the people of God. So, Elder, we are looking into the week, and we're going to see victory just from the topic itself. What are you, would you say, um, in closing out our overview for, the, for, for this week's lesson, if somebody's out there struggling, they've baptized once, they've baptized twice, they've tried, started to come back to church, they get discouraged, Satan is saying to them, you're a loser, God is not on your side, you don't even have a job, you can't keep your family together. One time they pack up, they move to outlive you. That's your failing, holding on to God. Looking into this week, what would be your advice to that someone outside um, listening to us today? All right, very perceptive. Uh, yesterday I heard a sermon from Pastor Knowles, and in, within it he was talking about the fact that a righteous man may fall seven times, but he gets up and goes again. And if you remember the story of Joshua the high priest standing before God and Satan coming to accuse him. And Joshua didn't even have a word to say because Christ steps in in Joshua's defense and said, this is one that I have saved, one that has been plucked from the fire. And Satan did not have another accusing word to lay against Joshua. So the thing for you to do is to trust in God. Do you stand on the word of God or are you going to listen to the propaganda? Are you going to listen to the words that Satan is putting in you, telling you you're not good enough, telling you God can never use you or you're falling too many times, there's no place for you. The question is, who do you listen to? It is in listening to God that you get the victory. It's always in listening to God and that always requires faith in God. Even though the situation around you is tough, it's challenging, logics, may want to suggest to you that to take matters into my own hand or to form an alliance here may be the reasonable thing to do. But I want to remind you, God requires the Christian to walk by faith, not by sight. The highest form of decision-making for the Christian is that of faith. And what is faith based on? Faith is based on the word of God. Faith is based on knowing that the God that you serve is the God who made heaven and earth. He is all powerful. He is all knowing. He cannot lie. He wants what is best for you and will not leave you nor forsake you. So even though the skies may be gray, even though the road may be rough and rocky, you need to see beyond the frowning, the dark clouds and to see God's providence working to bring you to victory. Trust in God with all of your hearts and lean not unto your own understanding. I want to thank Elder Ken for stopping in this morning and bringing us our update for more, more. Uh, later this morning. Later this morning at 1030, we'll have Elder Maurice Tyrell bringing to us Sunday's portion of the lesson. It was such an intriguing point. You look at the lesson and it didn't look at it as it was going to be as exciting as last 
last week's lesson, but here it is unfolding. We're up for an exciting week again. It's getting sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. And I want to tell you, we serve a God that today we can be down and out, but he's promised victory. And if he did promise to Judah, victory ahead of the Assyrians. And we now can look back and see that he was faithful. And he was not only faithful in that, he has been faithful in so many other areas. This morning, my friends, you can trust him. But remember, when you go out this week again, wear your masks. COVID has kept us in, in fear. And so today, as you go out, wear your mask. Exercise your physical distancing. And remember all ways to sanitize. You touch rails, you touch doors, you touch counters. Sanitize. COVID is real, my friends. The life you save may be yours or someone close to you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful day.